Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, I'm first. I'm about to embark on a major Sauvignonathon, if that's a word. It is now. Um, I've got 15 Sauvignons to taste, so I've split them over three videos. This is the first one. Uh, this is the Europeans. A couple of Frenchies, a couple of uh, Spaniards, and um, dig in. First one we have uh, from Bordeaux. It's Dort. Uh, La Grande Cuvée, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, now, Dort is one of the, for me, the, the best negociants at, uh, at, at doing uh, lower priced wines. Actually, it's not all that low priced, £8.49. Sometimes they do a few blends that have got uh, Semillon in, but uh, this one's 100% Sauvignon, and I think, like all the, all of, I think all of them's going to be uh, an oat. Let's give it a whirl and see. Now, Bordeaux Sauvignon often reminds me of tinned pears, and that's what I, the character I get here. That's like, you know, yeah, I can't remember the last time I had a tinned pear. I don't know if they even still make them, but uh, uh, it's, um, it's quite a pungent flavour. So there's the pear flavour, there's a little bit of citrus freshness, uh, but then there's this, um, I don't know if I call it a gritty smell. Does that make sense? Just to me. Uh, I'll stick my nose in and see if I can get some more, and then I'll, I'll come back. Nutty tinned pear. That for me is a classic uh, uh, Bordeaux Sauvignon uh, smelling note. Uh, let's see whether it's a classic tasting note. Uh, it smells like it's going to be quite zippy and fresh, but with quite a bit of weight behind it. Fresh, herby, crisp, quite simple, um, and uh, not quite as full bodied as I, I was, uh, as the nose would seem to suggest, but. Um, Nice um, crisp seafood wine. I mean, bring out your shellfish and uh, I'll have some lightly poached white fish, and um, I think you'll enjoy that. Um, maybe if I've got a problem with it, there's this little bit of sourness on the finish, and um, uh, it's it was 2011, wasn't the greatest of vintages. Let's see how we get on in the Loire with Domaine Rambo Sancerre 2011. And the Loire had a, quite a few problems in 2011. Let's see what this one's like. Well, it actually smells better than quite a lot of the uh, 2011 uh, Loire wines. Uh, quite a lot of them have this, uh, what I call, dusty grey rot character. Some people say, oh, that's geosmin. I'm, I'm never quite sure where grey rot and geosmin meet. But uh, uh, for me, it's that smell. If you've ever let uh, citrus fruit and uh, you, you've got one of them that uh, you've forgotten about in one end of the fruit bowl, bowl and it starts to go mouldy on the outside and you bat it and uh, these spores appear and... Uh, the smell of those, uh, but I don't get that here. Um, I get a, a, a crunchiness. It feels like it's going to be crisp and uh, juicy like the first one, uh, but maybe a little more of the vegetal characters, a nice vegetal. Sometimes the word vegetal sounds pejorative, but here it's, it smells like it's going to have a, a sappiness, a crispness, a freshness, and it's more, maybe more herby and grassy than the, uh, the Dort was. was. Pretty much straight down the line, Loire Sauvignon. Maybe I should be expecting a little bit more complexity from Sancerre, but uh, it's a decent enough drink. Uh, it's crisp, it's lively, it's perky, and um, yeah, some people pick up this this like gunflinty character in uh, more perfume than, than Sancerre, but um, there's something there that is of the definitely of the soil. Um, I like it, but again, as I said with the first one, uh, if there's something that lets it down, it's maybe this slight... Um, bitterness and sourness uh, just on the finish and again probably a sign of the vintage rather than uh, anything to do with uh, the quality of the producer. Let's go on to Spain. Uh, we are in Rueda first of all uh, with La Casa uh, de Sitios de Bodega uh, and um, so with Sauvignon Blanc, I mean Rueda uh, for me my favourite grape in Rueda is Vadeco but uh, the Sauvignon from here uh, does um, does pretty well. Let's see what this one's like. It feels fatter and juicier than uh, uh, the, uh, the the two French ones. Um, it's probably got more in common with the uh, the Bordeaux one. Feels like it's almost like a fatter, peachier version of the tinned pear character that was coming through in the Dort. Um, still smells like it's going to be fresh, but um, fleshier as well. Well, it's got quite a lot in common with the Dort. It's got what I call that, that, that tinned pear character. But here, it's a bit fleshier, a bit more peachy weight. Uh, and um, whereas the, the first two finished on that slightly tart side, here, uh, yes, that, that, that weight carries through. And it's not a weighty wine by any means, but it just has enough of that extra punch to uh, make it, uh, yeah, I'd say my favourite so far. Let's see whether the final one can uh, best it. It's Torres Fransola, 100% Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, from Penedes. So if this is the all the previous ones have been 2011. This one is 2010.
Well, I was just having a look on the back label. It says, um, excellent climate, giving us the best Sauvignon Blanc and a Pareada grape. It doesn't say men mention any, anything about Pareada on, on the front uh, label. But I was checking it to see whether, it's, um, whether it had any ochre or anything. Maybe what it is, is the extra uh, year that's giving this more rounded, honeyed style of, uh, uh, of aroma. Yes, there's, the, um, there's the, the, the green edges, if you want to call it that, green gauge, some of the citrus, um, maybe maybe not so much of the pear that I was getting on uh, on some of these, but um, but yes, it feels like it's going to be uh, still still has got some freshness, but has uh, relaxed a little bit. Let's have a see. Hmm, um, there's a smokiness going through, uh, like smoky elderflower, almost su suggesting that bits of it have been picked ever so slightly early in order to uh, um, to keep it uh, keep its its freshness in there. Um, and because uh, the flavours are quite rounded and rich, uh, but th this um, slightly gunflinty, smoky, yes, as I, I say, the elderflower, uh, it's got some of that, maybe some of that tinned pear character in there, but um, um, I think that's, it's a wine that I'm, I'm really not quite sure whether I like or not. Uh, I, 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 I probably prefer it to the, the, the two French ones, but I'm not sure quite how much I like it. At the moment, I, uh, the Rouet is the one that I'd uh, be most looking forward to a, a glass of at the end of this video. The only problem is I've got 11 other Sauvignons to try next, so uh, maybe it's going to have to wait its turn. See you soon.